church. That was a good uh, worship service. Thank you, Orlando. Um, so I have a story of someone, some people I know, but I can't tell you who their names are because I do want to send them this video at one point. So I don't want them to get upset that I told the story of their love. Okay, so I know these two people that have been married for a while. I know them very, very well. One expresses her love to the husband by saying, I love you, sweetheart. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to make your favorite breakfast and I'm just going to tell you how much I love you. You know, and she's just, she sits there and she gets ready and she's there all day at the house because that's what she likes to do. She likes to prepare the house for her husband that comes home and he comes home and she looks like she's going out on a date. And she expresses her affection by having everything ready and verbally expressing it as long as physically expressing it. And then you have the husband who he expresses his love by going outside and fixing the cars, uh, fixing the storage shed that she probably doesn't care about. Uh, he goes on the roof and patches the holes that she probably doesn't care about. But he expresses his love by doing something for her. And they're always kind of missing the mark. You're always hearing them saying, you know, you don't, you don't show this or you don't show that. But they're showing each other love, but they're not doing it the way that one another wants it to be done. Is it because they don't love each other? No. <laughs> exactly. Because they don't communicate. But... Is it even that they don't communicate or is it that they just don't have the correct answer? Because sometimes well, how we think we should do something for someone isn't exactly the way that person expected it. For instance, when I was 18, I had a whole different idea of what my 18th birthday was. It looked like, oh, I'm a man now, you know. And then I come, my mom and dad did a great job with the birthday party. They got a jumper house and they got a photo booth. I was like, okay, I invited all my manly friends and we have a jump house. But... Come, but come to know it, later on, everyone liked it. My mom expressed her love by not only showing me affection, but also giving me the things that she thought I would desire. But God's even better than that because God shows us how to express our love to him. This lesson I'm going to give is something that I've been wrestling with for about, uh, about a month now. And in these last couple of weeks, since I've actually grasped it, I've noticed that my relationship with God has even been more fruitful than before. And before, my relationship with God was fruitful, but right now, my relationship with God is thriving. Does that make sense? Has everyone in here had that opportunity where your relationship with God is thriving? And it's because this is something I've learned. Um, it's about what I was reading in John chapter 14. It's on obedience. And when we think of obedience, it's like Stephen... Why did you tell me a story about a husband and a wife that loved each other that was missing the mark? And now we're going to talk about obedience. In John chapter 14, Jesus talks about love and obedience. And this is literally my most favorite chapter in the Bible right now. This is literally something I've been reading over and over again, along with reading everything else. Our culture today hears the gospel understands the gospel, but does not apply the gospel. Right now, especially in, our, in my generation and younger, it seems that we always hear it and we're just like, ah, you know, that sounds great, but that's not for me right now. You know what, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to overcome all these battles, but that's not for me right now. I hear you, God. I hear you saying that I shouldn't steal. I don't steal. I hear you saying I shouldn't get drunk. I don't get drunk. But you say, don't have sex before marriage. You know what, that's... That's not for me right now because I like, the way, I like the way it makes me feel, right? I'm not there just yet. Or maybe it's not that extreme. Maybe it's, you know what, I don't, I don't have sex with, uh, with my girlfriend or my boyfriend. I don't steal, but you know what, I like to tell a little white lies to make myself look better. So you know what, I'm not there just yet. Because our culture, because in our culture we generally obey on our own, on our own terms and no one else's. Being here at the school, you meet a lot of people that listen to the rules on their own terms. Uh, I was, we teach Bible class, a lot, the Amers, and a lot of you guys know that. And in the Bible class, you'll tell them a story about something cool, like uh, Joshua getting eaten up by lions. Or Joshua praying, and then they eat up some people by lions or bears or something like that. Some kid was showing me that story. But then you talk about fornication or something, because he has a girlfriend, and he's telling me they're having sex. And you tell him, like, hey, you shouldn't be doing that. He's like, that's not for me right now, Stephen, but I like the cool stories. It doesn't make sense. 
Why do we obey God on our own terms? John chapter 14, verse 15. Jesus equates obedience and love in the Gospel of John. What does equate mean? It means to consider one thing to be the same or equivalent to another. And love, I'm going to give you two definitions out of the Webster's Dictionary, okay? And then love is an intense feeling of deep affection, a great interest in something we find pleasure in. But Jesus equates love and he equates obedience in the same verse. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. It's one leading into another. Jesus doesn't say, if you love me, and then we stop. Because sometimes in our culture, I've noticed, especially like really just getting out there and talking to people, in our culture, we're in love with God loving us, but we're not in love with us loving God and keeping his commandments. But we're really in love with God loving us. We're really in love with, oh, God, you love me. Jesus, you love me. I'm going to sit here, and I'm going to sing, but I'm going to hit up the club later. I'm going to go tear it up. But Jesus, I know that you love me, and I know I'm covered. We're in love with Jesus loving us, but we're not in love with loving him as much as we think we are because we're not keeping his commandments. Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. It's one leading into another. And then we're going to continue to read in verse 16 through 21. Um, and it's kind of small right here, but if you can, please open up your Bibles. I really, if there's a Bible in front of you, please grab it. If you have a Bible app, please open it. Please look at the text with me. We're going to look at the benefits of obedience. John 14, uh, verse 16. This is Jesus speaking. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may be with you forever. This is after Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Who was the helper he's speaking of? He's speaking of the Holy Spirit. Jesus says, I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper that he may be with you forever. This helper that we receive that will be with us forever is the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit you receive upon obedience, of course. Because if you love Jesus, you'll keep his commandments. In this same very book, in John chapter 3, he says, he talks to Nicodemus and he says, He says, no man can enter the kingdom of heaven unless you have been born again. He's talking about the spiritual rebirth. And if Nicodemus actually loves Jesus, what will he do? He will obey Jesus' commandments. There is no if, ands, or buts about it. And that's why Jesus is, this is why Jesus is following up with this. He says, "I I will give you another helper that he may be with you forever. This helper, this Holy Spirit that he's speaking of, will help us be obedient. That's why it's a helper. Because in the times when we're not sure what to do, if you truly have faith, the Holy Spirit's going to lead you. If you truly have understanding of what's living inside of you, of who's living inside of you, who are you going to be less of and more of? You'll be less of yourself and more of God. You're going to go to verse 17. It says, and this is the helper. That is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it does not know him, or because it does not see him or know him, but you know him because he abides with you and will be in you. He will live in us forever. It says right here, this is the spirit of truth from the world cannot receive, but because it does not see him or know him, but you know him because he abides with you and will be in you. It's almost impossible for someone to know God if he's, you're not in God. It's impossible for me to understand what sports are about, right? So like Bryce talks a lot about football, basketball, stuff like that. And it's really cool. But sometimes I don't even know what he's talking about. It's like way over my head because I'm not in the sport. But if you're in God, if you love Jesus, you're going to start to understand because that helper is going to help you along. Because he will live with us forever. Verse 18 says, I will not leave you as orphans, but I will come to you. He will not abandon us as orphans have been abandoned in this text is what he's trying to say. But he will come to us. If you love me, you shall keep my commandments. And he will not abandon us. Verse 18 says, after a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live and you will live also. We will see Christ even when the world doesn't. It says right here, after a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. 
in today's, in today's world, in today's context, how do we see Christ? We see Christ if we're truly seeking him out in every situation. The world may not. When, there, when your world's being shooken, when you're like, man, I just can't get over this, what's happening? You're like, you're like man, it's, it's, it's this guy over here. And you're not looking for Christ in the situation. Or when Donald Trump has made a bad decision that some people are just like, oh, man, Donald Trump's crazy. Who are we not looking for in the situation? We're not looking for Jesus. Or when North Korea, when North Korea says they're going to throw bombs, they're going to throw nuclear missiles at us. Who are we not looking for in the situation? We're not looking for Jesus. Or when something around us in our world, the political parties are just getting real tense and we're just arguing amongst ourselves, who are we not looking for? We're not looking for Jesus. Be- because maybe... We're being as the world and we're not seeing him. But if we truly know Jesus, we'll see him in every situation. We're going to go to verse um, verse 20. In that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Verse 21 says, He who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him and I will disclose myself to him. Obedience, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Jesus follows up in verse 21 and says, He who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. If we love Jesus, we will keep his commandments. And what does it say? And he who keeps my commandments is what? is the one who loves me. We're so in love with God loving us that we forget that we need to obey Christ even if we do love him. Because a lot of us love Jesus. But do we really seek to obey him? Do we really seek to obey Christ in every situation? Is there some things that we have not really taken care of because we're not looking for Christ in that situation because we're not truly looking to be obedient in that situation? And then at the very end, he says, and I will disclose myself to him. He will show himself to us. Verse 23 and 24, this is the blessings of obedience. We just looked at the benefits of obedience. We looked at the helper that's going to come and help us learn to how to better what? Obey Christ. We just learned about the helper is going to help us have that better relationship with Christ. But now we're going to look at the the blessings of obedience. Verse 23 says, Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him. And we will come to him and make our abode with him. If anyone loves me, Jesus says again, this is the third time he said this in this passage, he will keep my word. It's not just a one-way street where we just love Jesus and that's all we got to do. I love Jesus. It's cool. You know, it's cool. That's another gospel. But if we love Jesus, we're going to keep every word he has spoken from his lips. Every word. Sometimes I think we honestly obey on our own terms. And this is why this is so important to me right now in my Christian walk. Because right now, I'm trying to understand, okay, what am I supposed to do to better obey Christ? Not better obey on my terms. And not only, if anyone loves me, will keep his word. My father will love him and we will make, he will make his home with us. That should be super comforting extremely comforting, more comforting that we might not even understand what that really means, because I really don't understand what that really means. How can my father make his home with us? I mean, we understand, but do we really know? Do we, you guys know what I'm saying? Do we really know what that means? Sometimes when I'm reading scripture, you're reading it, and it's so comforting that it's almost too great to grasp. You're just like, thank God, right? Verse 24 says, and this is the kicker here, He who does not love me does not keep my words, and the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father who sent me. So Jesus says continually, if you love me, you'll keep my words. Then he says right after, he who does not love me does not keep my words, Jesus says. So Stephen, are you saying that every time I mess up, I'm not keeping God's word so I don't love God? That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying, does your walk match up with what Jesus wants us to walk? 1 John 1, 7 says, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us continually. That's because we're walking. It's not because, it's, it's, it's because we're walking with him. 
I'm not saying that we have to be perfect, because if we have to be perfect, verse 24 would really get us down. He who does not love me does not keep my words. How many of us have not kept his words at times? Every single person in here. So that, does that mean we don't love him? Or does that mean we're trying to walk? Does that mean we're trying to show that we're obedient to him? There's a big difference between someone who's trying to live like Christ and someone who just does lip service to live like Christ. There's a big difference. And that's what I'm challenging myself on a daily basis. Am I just giving Christ lip service saying I'm a Christian? Or am I going out there? Am I serving? Or am I going out there? Am I being obedient to Christ in every situation, even when it's not what I thought the situation was going to be? A perfect scenario was yesterday. This is actually perfect. Yesterday, Skylar and I went to go help someone, okay? And they're like, oh, yeah, it'll be a truckload and, you know, two guys, no problem. We get there. I'm not even kidding. You see the stage? There was a storage unit this big, and we had a truck maybe about, what, like, four or five pews long. And uh, this lady was watching us. She said, okay, well, okay, go ahead. And me and Skylar were there for eight hours. In that situation, we could have really got worked up and not been obedient in Christ and said, you know what, we're going to help you, ma'am. Or we could have just said, nah, forget this. I didn't sign up for this. I got things to do. But instead, we're obedient to Christ in every situation. And at the end of the day, she was thankful, and it gave us an opportunity to talk to her about Jesus. It gave us an opportunity to pray with her about Jesus, about her problems in her life. Because in every situation, are we truly being obedient to God is the question. And Jesus even finishes this section up that we're looking at with here and says, and the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father who sent me. And I think that Jesus seals it up with that because I almost feel like someone in the crowd was probably thinking and, and thinking like, okay, Jesus is just being a little controlling. I mean, he's saying, if you love me, you'll keep my word. It sounds like a control freak. But Jesus cleans that up and says what? Jesus says, it's not my words, but God who sent me. We're all in here. Everyone in this room are Christians. We're all trying to live more like Jesus, but are we living life in complete obedience to him on this side of the cross? Now let's look at a man on the other side of the cross in Psalms 119. His name's David. It says, verses 9 through 10, How can a young man keep his way pure? By keeping it according to your word. So David asks a question, and then he almost cleans it up. He says, how can a young man keep his way pure? So David's saying, how do I keep my way pure? And then David says, by keeping it according to your word. David's saying what? Looking to your word, by keeping in his word. Verse 10, he says, with all my heart I have sought you. Do not let me wander from your commandments. Here at Homestead Church of Christ, we really, uh, we're taught, where well, the Amers are taught about Psalms 139. We're taught about how to study with someone about God's relationship. And we get into this relationship and we teach people about, about how God fearfully and wonderfully made us, how God knows us, how God searches us out, how, how David hated sin so much he wanted to get rid of it. And then God's going to guide him. God, there's that intimate relationship on that side of the cross. And on that side of the cross in the Old Testament, David's also saying, it's, he says right here, with all my heart I have sought you. Do not let me wander from your commandments. David's saying, with all my heart I have looked for you, God. For with all my heart I have looked at your commandments to keep my way pure. And don't let me wander, wander from your commandments. Don't let me forget about what you have taught me. And that's on this side of the cross. Some of us think that that side of the cross, they didn't have an intimate relationship. But David must have had one. Because David's, what? He's talking to God and saying, he's saying, don't let me wander from your commandments. I have looked for you with all of my heart. Continually through the Old Testament, you read about these men in the Old Testament. And I think they had very, very intimate relationships with God, even though they were under the law. Very intimate. Moses had a very intimate relationship with God. David had a very intimate relationship with God. The people of Israel, whether they were with him or not, it was intimate because he was either punishing him or he was rewarding them. It was either death or life. It was pretty intimate whether they wanted it to be or not. They understood the importance of obedience. And so did David. Verse 15 and 16, it's for a little further down in the section. It says, I will meditate on your precepts and regard your ways. I shall delight in your statutes. I shall not forget your word. 
Just like David, on this side of the cross, David has that relationship and he says, he says, God, I meditate and I think about you night and day. He says, and I regard your ways. And then verse 16 says, I shall delight in your statutes and not forget your words. So David's saying, your commandments are not burdensome to me, just like in 1 John. If we love God, his commandments are not burdensome because we love Jesus enough to fulfill his word. And David says right here, he says, I delight in your statutes and I shall not forget your word. David had this intimate relationship with God. David had to take, he had to take his offerings to the altar, right? David had to do all these things and he still understood the intimacy of a relationship. And on this side of the cross, we can get real intimate, but we forget to keep his word, but we don't delight in the commandments that Christ gives us, but we don't love him enough to keep every single word he has spoken, but instead we pick and choose what we want. You know, a lot of times uh, I'll, I'll be sitting in my room and I'll just be thinking, am I doing this right? You know, I'll be sending a lot of apology texts. Hey man, sorry, I was a jerk. You know, oh hey man, sorry. You know, but why? Because if I love Jesus enough, I'm willing to keep his commandments. I'm willing to look like a fool for Christ to keep his commandments. It's interesting. Unfortunately, in my culture, I mean, in my age group, my generation, unfortunately, it's an epidemic. We want to obey God on our own terms. We just want to feel the love of God, but we don't want to return the love of God. We don't want to love Jesus enough to keep every word he has spoken. But instead, we want to put Jesus in a box. And we say, you know what, Jesus, I love what you're saying here in this chapter. But over here, that's a little tough for me. I'm just going to put that on the, on the back shelf for now. I'm just going to go ahead and wait. But I still love you because I know you love me. But Jesus says, if you love me, you shall keep my commandments. It's, it's, not, a, it's not really up for interpretation on that. It's not really up for, well, I think he's saying this, because it's pretty clear. Jesus says, if you love me, you shall keep my commandments. John equates love with obedience. Do I love Jesus enough to obey him in every aspect of my life? That is the question. Do we love Jesus enough to obey him in every aspect of our life? Because I, I think, and I hope this doesn't happen, but the more and more you talk to people in the world, the further and further and further it seems people are getting from God. And that's really scary. Okay? There's like a new gospel out there. Uh, and I'm not saying every church does this, but there's some people that think that you can love Jesus and do whatever you want and you're good. That's not, that's not what Jesus is saying here. If you love me, you shall keep my commandments. Let's be like David and let's meditate on his ways. Let's regard what Jesus is saying and let's not forget his word. Let's delight in what God is telling us. Let's delight in what Jesus is showing us. Let's delight in this light Jesus offers us. Because Jesus has paid a debt that we can never repay him but yet we still find ourselves doing what? Picking and choosing what we, need to, what we need to obey and what we do not need to obey. Right now, in my spiritual life, I'm really seeking to obey Christ. And when I mess up, because I will, I continue to walk in his statutes. I continue to delight in his word, just like David I will continue to love Christ and keep his commandments. I'm sure as I've been talking, including myself, I've heard, I'm assuming that one thing that you haven't surrendered to God has kind of popped up in your mind. You know, I've crucified all this. You know, Stephen, I'm, a, uh, I'm, I'm not, you know, I don't do all these things. I'm just a good guy, but, you know, I steal every now and then. Um, for instance, when I was in high school, I thought that I loved God because all I did was uh, I just did a few things, right? And then as my relationship went further and further from God, I realized I wasn't keeping his commandments. And then I tried coming to God, and I was like, you know, I'll just drink a beer every now and then. And then I was getting slammed. I was like, well, you know, I'm still a good guy. 
because now I go to church on Sunday to drag myself in and then I just get slammed on Friday nights. No big deal. But is that really loving God because I'm really not striving to be more like Jesus? Is that really loving Jesus because I'm not trying to crucify my sins? Loving Jesus is keeping his commandments. Loving Jesus isn't being perfect. It means that every time I mess up, am I willing to get up and go the extra mile once more? You know? For instance, I'm sure everyone in here has had a, a moment where you've met someone that was just saved. And for about a week, they seem like the holiest person. And then once they make their big one, their big one mistake, what happens? They just kind of just... Maybe they dwindle, maybe they don't. It really depends on the person. But sometimes you see that where they're holy with God. They're just like walking like this. They're just glowing while they walk, you know, everywhere. And then they make that one big mistake, and it seems like they think they're damaged. It's like, no, you keep delighting in God's word. You get up, and you continue to walk. You get up, and you continue to delight in his word. Because if you love God, you'll obey his command. If you love Jesus, you'll obey his commandments. This is literally my favorite passage right now. And I always have a new favorite passage every single week. This has been my new favorite passage for a while. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. So, we're going to close out with this. But, I'm going to say it one more time. I'm sure as I've been talking, you've had one thing that you haven't surrendered to God just pop up in your mind. If you love him, you will keep his commandments. So if you love him enough, you're willing to surrender that over to Christ. Truly. Because I'm sure we all have one that we haven't truly surrendered over. We haven't really given over to God. We haven't really given over to Jesus. We're on this side of the cross. So you can get as intimate with Jesus as you really want. You can talk to him any time of the day. You can, you, you can sing to him any time of the day. You can read with him any time of the day. You can walk with him any time of the day. You can be extremely intimate with Jesus. So why not obey his commandments? Why not love him enough to obey his commandments? Um, I actually want to pray out. And then if you have any prayer requests or anything, you just come forward. Father God, we just want to pray to you, God, just thanking you for your son, Father. Thanking you for the opportunity that we have, Father, to just be close to you because of your son. I pray that we truly look to be obedient to you in every aspect of our life, Father, that we truly look to be more like you, more like your son. I pray that as, as we walk, Father, that we just look at every situation and say, Father, how can I be more obedient today? How can I love you more today? How can I put myself on the cross, put my sins on the cross once more today? We love you and we thank you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray this prayer. Amen.